Welcome to how to build good emotional intimacy while you're dating or in your relationship. Doesn't matter whether it's a new relationship or whether it's something that's been going on for 20 years, these tips will help you connect with your partner, know if they're the right one for you or rekindle that emotional intimacy so you can have more physical intimacy. Stay tuned for more. Did you know that studies show that being intelligent is actually attractive to your partner? In fact, so much so that during surveys, they found that people whose partners were always learning, always growing, and who they perceived to be smarter than them were actually more attractive. Now that doesn't mean you wanna be perfect and try to hold yourself up as perfect for everything because people don't like that either. When you are acting superhuman as if you're more than, it also conveys a sense of distance, as if I'm better than you or you're not good enough. And it can really, for a lot of people, trigger some insecurities. However, having close intellectual conversation and feeling that their partner is as equally or more smart than them was a big turn on, especially for women. Number two. Stay off your phone. I mean, I know that sounds obvious, but did you know the average American checks their phone every 10 minutes? Every 10 minutes. So if you're trying to build some emotional intimacy or if you're really trying to get to know somebody and make them feel important, stay off your phone. Put it away because even studies have shown if you leave your phone on the table, even if it's face down, people don't feel as connected as when your phone is not in sight. So even though we think, oh, look at how great I am. I'm just, we're gonna eat dinner and I'm just gonna have my phone here, but it's gonna be face down so I can't get distracted by any of my pop-ups or any of my texts. It's still, the brain knows that it's there and it still creates more disconnection than when you have your phone actually hidden. So that's your second tip is hide your phone. You don't need it, especially if you're trying to have that intimate something with somebody. I mean, even when I own my business, I always taught my employees, take care of the person at the desk first and you can always go back and check the voicemails because the person that's in front of you is the one that should be the most important. Now, if you have a business meeting, if you have a really important call to take, just warn your partner ahead of time. Like, hey, unfortunately, I have to take this one call. Once that's done, I'll put it away. And at least there's some communication about it and that other person doesn't feel as if they're unimportant. Number three, and this is a really big one, use their name a lot. In fact, people's brains are really tuned into their own name. It's why you can be at a party and you hear somebody say your name and all of a sudden you're like, oh, did somebody say my name? And it completely can pull you out of your conversation because we're attuned to that energy. We're attuned and we want to have that relationship. We want people to know who we are. So if you're dating for the first time, it's good to use their name because A, it lets them know that you remember who they are, that you care about who you're talking to. And if you've been in a relationship for 20 years, there's something very sensual when you start using your partner's name deliberately and attentively, right? It conveys a sense of trust, of connection, and of um, an emotional intimacy that can actually turn on the brain, help it calm down, help it feel safe, which then also prepares the body for better physical intimacy. And finally, small touches. Even if you've been in a relationship for a really long time and you have a really great and active sex life, small touches, whether you're just dating or whether you're in that space of relationship are very important. It's almost like a little tease or a little another attention. It helps the body know, it kind of wakes up. It starts connecting you on a more physical level, right? It re touch releases the hormone oxytocin. Oxytocin is known as the cuddling hormone or the bonding hormone. And when oxytocin is released, it also helps calm the system. And look at how stressed out we are these days, right? We've got work, we've got jobs, maybe we've got kids, you've got things to pay for, you've got all this social media, you've got, like your brain is always processing information and touches, intentional, small, purposeful touches, calms that nervous system down. It releases that bonding hormone, thus making a person more attentive, make them feel closer to you and you to them as well, right? It works both ways, but it also prepares for something down the line, right? You can make it a little more teasing. You can make it a little more playful if you know where your evening's going or if you're trying to convey your attraction or your interest to somebody. And even if it doesn't lead to something physical in the bedroom, 
it's still a really great way to create that connection to let them know that you are attracted or that you're still attracted. Because people that have been together for years, they still wanna know their partner finds them attractive. So why not give them those little touches that show them that, that remind them that, that make them feel special and wanted. Because don't we all wanna feel special and wanted? There are the tips on how to do small, sexy, connected things to create that emotional intimacy with your dating life or your partner. Remember, you're loved, you're loving, you're lovable. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the next videos.